this is Mr. Edgar. Um, this is a quick video kind of hitting just an extra point about center of mass. So center of mass was talked about uh, back in one of the momentum lectures. Um, I think when we get to more of like the inelastic versus uh, elastic collisions, there's a short part that I kind of go through the whole um, definition for center of mass and what it is. And so again, just to quickly review from that, the center of mass, uh, again, the main idea is the center of mass is what essentially truly experiences the net force for, for a Newton's second law. That would be basically like the, the basic definition of Newton's second law, sorry. That would be the basic definition for center of mass. It's what really experiences the net force for Newton's second law. There's only a center of mass when we are looking at a system, okay? So there ha it has to involve a system to say we're looking at a center of mass. In other words, there has to be more than one project. If there's only one, one project, one object, if there's only one object, the center of mass is the center of the object itself, essentially, obviously, as long as it's a uniform object, okay? But there's obviously these problems. We, we technically have been doing it with Atwood's but it comes up quite a bit in momentum, okay? And that's why it's obvious we've been already talking about it a little bit in momentum, where something happens and we're going, what's going on with the center of mass? What's going on between the two objects, okay? And usually the problems, the problems that have this is basically, you have, I'm gonna just draw it out. You basically have like two objects that are connected together, I'll call it one and two, and they're moving along together at a certain velocity. Then at some point they split apart. So two gets shot off, maybe goes a little bit faster, we'll call it just V2, and then you have object number one has a new velocity V1, and the question will go, what is the velocity, what is the new velocity for the center of mass? I'm just going to say CM for the center of mass, okay? And a lot of kids have asked me, like, I just don't understand what I'm trying to solve for this. So where do I get the center of mass and everything like that, okay? So the things today I want you to remember for the center of mass, okay, is this. One, we already, I think most people understand this. The center of mass is always closer to the larger mass. Okay? That's based on that initial equation for center of mass. Okay? It's always closer to the larger mass. That's where we did the problem where you know we go the the total mass okay times the center of mass will equal basically each mass and their position essentially. Okay? where the positions are, and we just keep on going and going and going. That's the basic, that's, that's the basic formula for it. All right? So that we obviously want to remember. The second thing then is, okay, what about the velocity of the center of mass? Okay? What about the velocity of the center of mass? Okay? What about the object's velocity? Okay? So, when I'm looking at the center of mass in terms of their velocity, sorry, so what about the velocity of the center of mass when I'm looking at that? The one thing I want you to remember is if I'm looking at the system, which we are, we're, always gonna, we're almost always looking at the system, okay? The velocity of the center of mass, the velocity will not change. if the forces are internal to the system. All right, so going back to this problem, I have this spaceship, okay, triangle, square piece, okay? And we say there, it's traveling together. It's two pieces, but they're traveling with one velocity. That means they're traveling with one momentum, one system. I mean, the whole momentum is constant, right? Or, I'm sorry. It all travels with one system momentum, one velocity. Then at some point, basically, 
they eject off of each other. Two pushes on one and makes it split off. So two creates a force on one and basically maybe makes it go off faster. So now maybe V1, we have a velocity V1 and V2, and the problem will say V1 is greater than the original V. Okay? What can you tell me about the velocity of the center of mass? The answer is, okay, the velocity of the center of mass CM is still equal to V. It's still equal to V because the whole idea is what happened? Two pushed on one, one pushed on two. It, what can you tell me about the overall momentum of the system? It's going to be conserved. And so that means the object, the center of mass, while it might approach one, is basically continuing to move the same distance in between. Where the center of mass is, sorry, stays consistently in between those two objects. Okay? And so basically, if it, as long as it keeps on moving that velocity, as the maybe one is moving faster, the center of mass still remains just as close to one as it was before versus two. If we say mass of one is greater than two, okay? So maybe the center of mass is a little bit more up front. As they move apart, it still remains proportionally that distance away from one and from two, basically from the center between the two objects. So the velocity of the center of mass, again, will not change unless there's this outside force. So now if I said, you know, I have these two objects, okay, one and two, sorry, just a second. All right. So let's say, for example, if we have these objects one and two connected together, maybe they have some sort of spring. Well, not, let's not even say that. They're just connected together. I have this velocity of them moving. Obviously, if I then come in and create an outside force, well, guess what? The center of mass, the velocity of the system, the velocity of the center of mass will increase. Okay because I am making the whole system move faster, so the center of mass will move faster, that will create an increase in velocity. But more common, more common the AP questions will be, what happens to the velocity of the center of mass? And I'll have this one person, you know, another example I can give you, which you'll we'll probably see on a practice test, is you're skating along and you throw a snowball, okay? The snowball obviously has a much higher speed now, but it was part of the system initially. You didn't change anything about the system, just basically where the objects are, so the center of mass, the velocity of it will remain the same. So that's basically the main thing I want to keep pushing on. I've had a lot more people asking questions about it, and uh, you know we're just trying to make sure it's clear. The velocity of center of mass will stay, keep doing what it's doing unless there's an outside net force. If it's within the system, if these two objects have a spring that splits those two apart, that's within the system, it's already part of the system, the center of mass will keep doing what it's doing, okay? So that's all I want to try to make sure I clear up with the center of mass, and that's it. Thanks.